Thank you for joining us, Dr. Feinberg. Can you tell us a little bit about your background in infectious diseases and the role you're occupying now and how it's changed since COVID? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. So um, I am currently the chair of the National HIV Medicine Association, and that is a part of the Infectious Disease Society of America. We focus on the health and care and well-being of people with HIV and the healthcare providers that serve that population. And of course, we've been concerned about the impact of COVID-19 on people with HIV. In addition to my role in HIV MA, I'm professor of medicine in infectious diseases and professor of behavioral medicine and psychiatry at West Virginia University's School of Medicine. Um, so we were all very concerned, as were our colleagues around the world who specialize in HIV care, what this epidemic, this actually this pandemic, would mean for people with HIV, who of course, by definition, human immunodeficiency virus, um, have a condition, a chronic condition that affects their immune systems. And we have been pleasantly and delightfully surprised that people with HIV have done no worse than other individuals, which is great. We were afraid that this would be something that might be because of even on medication, people with HIV don't have normal immune systems. They're never brought back, no matter how good the medicine is and how well controlled their HIV is, they never regain the immune system they had before they got HIV. So there's always some residual damage. And we were concerned for not only the people who are well controlled, but also for the people who haven't yet been diagnosed that they have HIV or people whose HIV is not well controlled. We were concerned that this would really be a major medical catastrophe actually for this population. And we have been blessed and blessedly lucky that the data so far seem to indicate that people, as I said before, people with HIV don't seem to do any worse than, you know, their compatriots who don't have HIV. Now, a lot of people with HIV are older. The average age of people with HIV in the United States and Europe is over 50. So as people get older, they acquire all of the other diseases of old age, right? Hypertension, heart disease, high cholesterol, cancer, you know, all the other things that sort of plague individuals as they get to be older. And in that regard, people with HIV are kind of no different from um, other people at high risk for not great outcomes from COVID-19 because those are the risk factors for not doing well with COVID-19. But the HIV itself does not seem to play a factor. You know, we need to be concerned because we have so many older patients who have heart disease. Um, you know, they're smokers, they've had some lung damage, et cetera. We need to be concerned about that. But the HIV per se does not seem to add to their risk. And we are delighted so far that that's the case. There's, there were initially just kind of um, unconfirmed reports that this was the case that came out of Europe because, uh, and China, uh, because that's where the, the pandemic went before it came here. But we have seen now case series from the United States as well that show that um, just because you have HIV, you're not more likely to get COVID-19, you're not more likely to die of COVID-19. So um, that is a silver lining in an otherwise very dark cloud um, because the pandemic, of course, is, uh, is a terrible public health problem and, a, and, and truly in the United States now a public health catastrophe, sadly.